Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game, The Pickle Rick Game. It's, it's Pickle Rick, Morty, wow! This was sent to me by Cryptozoic Entertainment and is designed by Matt Hyra and Corey Jones. Someone awesome gets to play as Pickle Rick and try to escape a heavily armed compound. Another, more tortured soul plays as the Russians and Jaguar, who are hell-bent on crushing Solenya, the pickle man who crawls from bowls of cold soup to steal the dreams of wasteful children, a.k.a. Pickle Rick. Here, you can get a better look at the container. Uh, it's, it's Pickle Rick. It's a big old Pickle Rick. Um, but yeah, let me show you how to play. So here's the setup. If you're Pickle Rick, you're trying to get to the rooftop up here before time runs out. You'll use wits, cunning, and killer weapons to blast your way to the rooftop. Use traps to kill guards across the board. Use air ducts to avoid the guards and get out of jams. Keep cards in your hand as the only way you can deal damage is with cards. And you start with five Pickle Rick cards. Pickle Rick is the only character who can move onto face down tiles, which flips them face up. And he is the only one who can move into an empty space. He immediately draws a tile and places it face up on that space. And Pickle Rick always goes first. Now these are the Russians. At the end of any player's turn, the Russians win if any of the following are true. If Pickle Rick runs out of hit points, which you keep track of on his Pickle Rick card here. If Pickle Rick runs out of cards in his deck or if there are no tiles left in the tile stack. So the Russians will use their cards to deploy extra guards to put the hurt on Pickle Rick. And then when Jaguar shows up later in the game, he will also try to hunt down Pickle Rick. You can deal damage to Pickle Rick also using your dice. Uh, just make sure the guards and Jaguar are in the right place at the right time. So there are four steps in a turn. Roll four dice, re-rolls, spend the dice, and then end your turn. And there are different icons on the sides of the dice. This is the move icon. You spend a move die to move a character you control to an adjacent space. Some cards require this uh, move icon as a cost also to play the cards. For example, the jetpack in the top left corner here, you would need a one move icon to use it. You can move up to five spaces this turn, but stop after moving onto a tile you just placed or flipped. This is the draw icon. You can spend a draw die to draw a card from your deck. There is no maximum hand size, so you can have as many cards as you want. This is the utility icon. It has no ability on its own, but it can be used as a cost to pay for cards to play. This is the gun icon. Uh, there are two gun icons on each die. The Russian player can use gun icons to shoot at Pickle Rick. For Pickle Rick, this gun icon has no inherent ability, but he can use gun icons to spend on uh, specific weapon cards. For both players, several cards require this gun icon as a cost to play the card. And the star is the wild icon. This can be any icon you want, so if you ever get this, don't re-roll it. You can choose whatever icon you want, and it can be spent as that icon. So let's roll our four die. We rolled two guns and two draw cards. Now if you like what you have on the dice here, you don't have to re-roll them, but if you want, you can choose to re-roll some of them. Pickle Rick can usually re-roll all of them, unless guards and Jaguar are nearby. Then his maximum number of re-rolls is reduced by one for each enemy who can see him. Characters can only see in straight lines, never diagonally, and they can't see through walls, face down tiles, or air ducts. And there is no limit to their sight. So if these were face up and uh, a straight path, they would see him and he would have to only be able to re-roll two dice. But if he's unseen like right now, he could re-roll all four if he wanted. Now let's say I want to re-roll these two. Okay, so now I have four guns. You must spend the die that you roll if you are able to. So if you roll move icons or draw icons, you have to do them. Now remember, you can also use those icons to spend on cards. Now these would require specific uh, utility symbols, but these can use anything. So a screw launcher, you could deal one damage to a foe on this tile and then draw a card. Or with the uh, trophy trap, you can choose a red or blue tile. Uh, as, we, as the game goes on, um, some of these tiles are red or blue. Uh, it would deal one damage to a foe on that tile and draw a card. Now after using up your dice, if you can't move, shoot, or draw anymore, you pass the unused dice to your opponent, and then they go. If Pickle Rick ever runs out of cards in his deck, he loses the game if he doesn't win it by the end of the current player's turn. If the Russians run out, they don't lose, but they can't reshuffle their deck. So with cards, you can play as many as you can as long as you can afford them. So if the Russians had four guns, they could play a patrol, which would deploy a guard on a blue tile, and then you move in one space. Or suppressing fire, move Pickle Rick onto an adjacent face-up tile, and you can move him through conjoined air ducts. A lot of these cards have very different effects. After playing cards, you discard them into a face-up discard pile. And if you want to get more cards in your hand, you have to use those draw icons on the dice to get more cards. So let's talk about moving. Each time you spend a move icon, you move a character you control one space into an adjacent, never diagonal space. You may move onto a tile your character previously occupied during your turn. And any number of characters may occupy the same tile. 
For the Russian characters, moving means going up from one face-up tile to another adjacent face-up tile. You may only spend one move icon each turn per guard, and you may spend two move icons on Jaguar if he is on the board. Russians may not move through walls, air ducts, or onto face-down tiles, so these only Pickle Rick can go through. But if you had one move icon, you could move a guard here. Pickle Rick has a lot more variety to his movements. Uh, he can move on to an adjacent face-up tile, just like a regular guard, but he can also move on to adjacent face-down tile. So let's say Pickle Rick moves on to here. You would flip the tile. Now, with this arrow on it, you would put the arrow in the direction of the movement you were going. So since he's going this way, this arrow would point that way. Now this is a wall, so Pickle Rick can't go through this wall, but what Pickle Rick can do is actually go into empty spaces. So let's say Pickle Rick uses a move icon to go here. He would flip the top tile, uh, and he would place it with the arrow pointing in the direction he's going here. Now note that this tile says deploy two guards. That means the Russians can place two Russian guards right on that same tile as soon as Pickle Rick goes on there. Now Pickle Rick can also go through air ducts. As you can see, there's an air duct here. So um, he would try to go through it. So we would flip this tile. And look at that, there's an air duct. That means the move is successful. You would match up the air ducts together and then Pickle Rook successfully moves through. Now there's a wall here, so the Russian guards can't pursue him that way. Two thirds of the tiles have air ducts on them, so there's a good chance this move will work, but sometimes it won't. If it doesn't work, if there's no air duct on the tile, the move has failed and he has to stay where he is. But since there is an air duct on this tile, he can move right through. If there had not been an air duct here, uh, Pickle Rick would stay here, and you would instead put this, put this tile so that the arrow is in the direction he would have gone. But since there is an air duct, you would match it with his other air duct, and he would go through successfully. If Pickle Rick decides to go back through the air duct, he just goes through with regular movement. Now let's talk about shooting. Uh, Pickle Rick needs to use cards to deal damage to the Russians, but the Russians can just use guns to shoot Pickle Rick. So guards have a range of zero to one. This means they can shoot at Pickle Rick if he is on the same tile as them or one tile away. Each guard can use one gun icon per turn. However, Jaguar may use up to two gun icons each turn to shoot Pickle Rick. Each gun icon spent to shoot at Pickle Rick subtracts one HP from Pickle Rick's hit points. And if he goes down to zero on his character sheet here, uh, the Russians win the game. So if you had rolled, let's say, two guns, and there were two Russians here, Pickle Rick is in range, so you could use both guns to shoot him twice and take his HP down and take his HP down to eight. But if there were a guard here, they can't shoot Pickle Rick because this wall is in the way. So let's look at how Pickle Rick's combat works. This is a trophy trap. If you spend any die, so it could be any die at all, uh, you can choose a red or blue tile. Let's say this one. Deal one damage to the foe on that tile. All the guards have one HP, so you would kill this guard, and then you could draw a card from your deck. So if you had one utility dice you could spend, you could use the pencil punji pet, choose a gray tile, and deal one damage to one or two foes. So you could kill both of these guys with this card. And if we look at some of the Russian cards, uh, this card is locked down. You can rotate a blue tile in a, at a 90 degrees in any direction. You could go like this or something like that. Um, and then with the patrol, you can deploy a guard on a blue tile, and then you can move him one space. So I could put another guard here, and let's say move him here. So Pickle Rick has to fight through all these guards and try to make his way up to here to the rooftop. If he can make his way up to the rooftop uh, without dying, then he is the winner. Note that the rooftop does not have an air duct, so you can't use the air duct option to get there. The check for a loss condition only happens at the end of a player's turn. So if Pickle Rick draws his last tile from the tile stack, or the last card from his deck, but he still makes it to the rooftop on that same turn, he still wins by the skin of his briny cucumber. Now let's talk about Jaguar. Jaguar does not start the game in play, but there are a few ways to put him on the board. Uh, the most inevitable way is through tiles that get placed. If a third red tile or blue tile is placed or flipped, Jaguar immediately appears on that tile. This only happens once, not each time a third tile of either color is played. You can also make Jaguar appear using cards, uh, like this isn't personal. If you play this card, you can place Jaguar on a red tile. If Jaguar is ever removed from the game for any reason, he cannot return to play. Pickle Rick can move any number of times during your turn at a cost of one move icon for each move, unlike the guards who can only move one space per turn. Pickle Rick also has a special ability that might convince Jaguar to give up on trying to kill him. If you can knock Jaguar's HP down to five and pay uh, two draw icons, um, then you can convince Jaguar to leave the game. When Russian guards are killed, and they will be killed very quickly, uh, you place them back near the Russian guard's character card, they can come back. And if you run out of off-board Russians and need to place more Russians, you can take already deployed Russians and place them as needed. And that's pretty much the game. You're trying to move Pickle Rick and find your way through. As you can see, this card, uh-oh, 
uh, it's going the wrong direction. So he's going to figure he could either do a movement here or try to do an air duct movement here. Um, let's say he tries an air duct movement. Ooh, it fails. So instead, he would have to go this way instead. Um, it can get pretty confusing because uh, you never know what car tiles are going to pop up, and so Pickle Rick might need to go a long roundabout way to get to the rooftop. And obviously the cards are the meat of the game, so we can take a few, look at a few of them. Like this is the reinforcements cards for the Russians. You can deploy three guards on a blue tile. Uh, Gunpowder Cure, you can heal two damage from Jaguar. Um, if he has been defeated or removed, uh, draw a card instead. Um, parkour, you can actually use this card to move one space through an air duct uh, as if there was an air duct or not. So in this case, you could use a parkour to go through here. Blade Launchers, you can choose up to two foes within range one and deal two damage to each. Uh, Condiment Cure, you can heal four damage from Pickle Rick. There's lots of different cards for attacking, moving your guys, adjusting the board. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do in play. Um, otherwise, it's basically card and dice combat and moving through these tiles. And that's the game. There's an interesting balance of mechanics here with a super powerful Pickle Rick who has way more movement and attack options, and then the wave of Russians with small HP and the inevitable Jaguar. It's a fun game, but there's kind of a lot of factors of luck in this game. Rolling the dice is one thing, but then you've got the tiles, which can go all sorts of directions and could have walls and stuff. Like, you know, every time you flip over a face down tile or try to go to an empty space, it could just be something that just totally ruins you. Uh, and you've got cards from the deck that are totally random. There's a lot of randomness here. Also, because Pickle Rick can't reroll dice if uh, enemies can see him, if he's swamped by four different enemy sites, he's basically screwed because he can't reroll the dice. And it's purely luck. Just roll the four and hope you can do something with them and hope you can spend them on the cards. Otherwise, you're kind of fucked. But there are fun mechanics at play here. Playing the cards and shooting each other and setting up traps it is simple, but it's it's strategic and it's fun. But there are kind of a lot of things that are out of your control. And then let's talk about this package. This is like a flimsy sort of plastic package. And then you got this guy, which is funny, I guess, but as a practical case, it doesn't really work. They, they give you like flimsy plastic inserts that like barely fit the components and taped together with scotch tape. I just didn't throw those away. Um, and then like, this, like, it's a pain in the ass, honestly, to put all this inside a pickle. Like, if you look in here, it's just kind of like a mess. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, it's a mess. It's just that and sometimes closing the pickle is really annoying, too. Uh, this really needed, like, either better inserts to fit the pickle or better yet, just give us a box. Like, I, I don't need this pickle to be the box. It, it's funny, I guess, but it just does not work as a box at all. So bottom line, it's a fun game, and it's an interesting asymmetric type of game with different powers and different types of uh, characters you're playing at, but the balance is a little off. To its credit, it's not even necessarily biased towards one side. Like, luck can just destroy both sides at some point. Um, if you're a huge Rick and Morty fan, I would recommend getting this, because it's it is fun. It's a fun asymmetric sort of combat movement game uh if you're not i don't think you need to rush out and get the big pickle uh if you don't really are not really familiar with rick and morty um but if you do play it it's pretty decent just a little chaotic i'm i'm pickle rick yep pickle, pickle rick <laughs>